Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs, and uh, today it's about uh, EMI and RFI noise uh, generated, especially from these neat little switch mode power supply. We encountered the problem uh, when some customers who are making experiments with our tube experimental kit RT100, which I describe in another uh, video series. Uh, when they are uh, reproducing our radio reception uh, experiments, uh, they got uh, problems, noise problems, when they use uh, one of these uh, switch mode power supplies. And uh, that was the reason for us uh, to investigate the problem a little bit more and uh, to find a solution in form of a uh, filter, which we are at the moment developing. And uh, in this uh, first part of this two or three part series, uh, we'll take a look at uh, the whole problem of RFI or EMI interference, uh, which is the ab abbreviation for electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interfer interference. And you also might encounter the word EMC, which is electromagnetic compatibility. And that's how you design your circuit um, in a way that uh, the EMI or RFI noise uh, doesn't interfere with your circuit and that on the other side your circuit doesn't emit any disturbing noise in the radio frequency range. Um, now that's uh, for the introduction and now let's take a look at the four sources that we identified where you can get noise coupled into your uh, circuit and the problems that you that you or anybody encounters uh, is not only when doing radio reception it's also when you are uh, having to do with circuits that um, are precision AC or DC amplifiers where any signal even in the microvolt range might pro produce erroneous uh, signals and uh, the best way is uh, not just not to let any noise into your circuit and uh, the first to start with, start with is that your power supply, uh, your DC power supply must be completely clean. So uh, let's start with a look at uh, the uh, four sources of radio frequency interference, uh, especially concerning uh, switch mode power supplies, which are, as we all know, which are very effective. They have a high efficiency, they are lightweight, they are small and they are cheap. But when you are dealing with radio reception or especially AM radio reception or precision analog uh, circuits, uh, then these um, power supplies are a little bit pain in the ass. Uh, some of the sources of the noise sources that we identified uh, even come into play when you are using linear regulated power supply. So this is a uh, relatively universal tutorial uh, about any kind of uh, noise uh, sources and how to eliminate them. So let's take a look at where the noise comes from. So let's suppose uh, we start with the mains connection of our uh, switch mode power supply. And we first of all take it just as a black box uh, with a, uh, the uh, mains voltage input. And the output is of course on the one side ground and on the other side the regulated DC output. Now uh, the first source of noise is of course the uh, switching, uh, the uh, noise from the switching frequency that is uh, superimposed on the uh, DC voltage and uh, this is um, from the frequency range, it's the switching frequency which is from in today's world between 50 kilohertz 
that's the lowest uh, that you usually get and more modern switch mode power supplies can go up to 5 megahertz and of course the harmonics because um, if the switching transistor the switch uh, switching fed uh, is uh, switched on and off hard which means with a rectangle signal and a rectangle signal of course has an infinite amount of uh, harmonics so uh, if you are switching with uh, even with a low frequency 50 kilohertz uh, frequency you get harmonics uh, up to the megahertz range in, in even up to the shortwave uh, range um, so you will hear multiples of the switching frequency uh, in any uh, AM and shortwave uh, receiver so that's the first part of um, where noise comes from and a second source which is uh, not so much uh, known are so-called uh, so-called common mode interference or common mode signals now what is that um, the the noise from the uh, from the switch mode power supply is a reference to ground and uh, we'll later see in part three of this uh, series how you can relatively easily uh, filter out this uh, but what do you do if you have a, a signal that has the same amplitude on the DC and on the ground uh, level uh, you cannot filter this out with a simple capacitor because uh, when the signal is present on both uh, lines then uh, the, the, uh, any capacitor doesn't have uh, any value, any meaning um, because uh, the lower side of the capacitor and the, the high side is lifted both in, in sync, uh, synchronized uh, by this common mode signal and that's why it's called common mode because it is present on on the plus and on the minus side of the power supply and uh, there is for DC supplies there's basically only one method which is not all very well known to filter out such uh, common mode signals so that's the second uh, source of noise and another thing that is hardly known, it, I'll show you on this uh, photo of a uh, simple uh, switch mode power supply. We have on the left side, this is the primary side. What we can see here, the mains current arrives here. We have a full wave bridge rectifier consisting of four rectifying diodes. We have here uh, the big uh, charging uh, capacitor for the primary side. Uh, we even can see here the, indu the inductor where the uh, energy from the uh, switching IC is stored and uh, here we have the division between primary and secondary side. We see a little optocoupler um, where the feedback signal uh, gets from uh, secondary to primary side. And what do we see here? This obviously is a capacitor which bridges the uh, primary and secondary side. Now, uh, what does this mean? Um, let's suppose this is, we have here the primary side of the switch mode power supply, the secondary side and uh, when you think that you get away with the 50 or 100 hertz um, uh, hum that you get from linearly regulated power supply well there's one catch if you have a capacitor in this case it was 2.2 nanofarads which bridges the primary and the secondary side, then you get uh, 50 or how, perhaps you're living in the 60 hertz uh, uh, world, you get 50 or 60 hertz or depending if it's, if it's already rectified then it's uh, 100 or 120 hertz. 
Now this uh, uh, mains frequency couples through this bridging capacitor uh, to the secondary side and uh, that's uh, this, the third source of noise, in this case it's hum, you get a uh, usually a either 100 hertz or 120 hertz hum noise. If your switch mode power supply does have such a bridging uh, capacitor and, and uh, many uh, of the switch mode power supplies that you can buy do have such a uh, capacitor. Uh, so, um, and this, um, this hum is relatively difficult to filter out because of its low frequency. You, you might remember um, that uh, a, a capacitor to, or an inductor to filter out uh, hum has to be uh, the bigger, the lower the frequency is. Um, and uh, that's not very convenient um, because uh, we'll later see that we need uh, sometimes even more than 1000 microfarads uh, to filter out, uh, at least partially filter out this noise. So that's uh, quite annoying uh, to have uh, this 100 or 120 hertz uh, noise. And there's a fourth way how noise can couple uh, into your signal. Um, we still have something like earth. And even if neither your switch mode power supply has a direct connection to earth, nor um, your load does have a connection to earth, there always is a connection because you always have parasitic capacitors here and uh, there's a parasitic coupling of, um, no of noise that either exists on the earth into your uh, circuit or the other way around uh, from a primary or secondary side to earth and then earth is never perfect. It's uh, it, it's uh, in today's world where we have uh, lots of switch mode power supplies uh, that are connected to your mains voltage and in the end also to earth. Uh, it's not clean and then there is nothing like zero resistance. You always have from different uh, points uh, of the earth. You always have um, you always have uh, uh, parasitic resistances. And now here on the secondary side, you also of course have parasitic capacitors and you also have parasitic inductors because it's, it's, a, it's a cable, it's a line and uh, there is nothing like an ideal line. You have uh, parasitic resistance, you have parasitic uh, inductance and you have parasitic capacitance and this is a way where um, where noise couples from the primary side from all other sources that are somehow either directly connected to earth or capacitively coupled to earth it gets through into uh, your circuit and remember even uh, if the resi resistance, the parasitic resistance, is in the milliohms range, and even if the inductance it would be in the micro or nano Henry range, and even if your parasitic capacitance are in the picofarad range, uh, this is enough uh, to generate at least a few microvolts, but usually you will see millivolts of uh, noise coupling through this way. And this fourth way, the uh, let's call it uh, the earth coupling or coupling of RFI and EMI through the earth. Um, if your, your signal like in a radio uh, reception is in the microvolts range or in, in precision analog circuitry where you amplify your signal 
thousandfold or even millionfold, then um, when your signal is only a few microvolts, but you have noise in the m millivolts range, then your noise is much greater than, um, than your signal. And um, so we have to find a way to deal with all these four ways for the, uh, these four sources of noise. And it's not trivial. You might think, well, I just take a 1000 microfarad capacitor and this will eliminate and uh, filter out all the noise. We'll later see in part three that this is absolutely not sufficient. You, uh, when you really want a very clean DC supply voltage, uh, you must um, uh, construct a multi-stage filter where for all of these um, four sources of noise is taken care of and where all these four sources are separately dealt with and filtered out with specialized components. So that was it for today for a short introduction. I hope to see you uh, on the next part of, of the series or on our other um, videos on our YouTube channel. And that, that was it. Bye from Kanka Labs.